Internet Connectivity In this video, we are going to see about what is Internet Connectivity. There are various types of connectivity to get hooked onto the Internet. They all can be broadly classified in two following category. Level 1 Connectivity Level 2 Connectivity Level 3 Connectivity Level 1 Connectivity Level 1 connectivity is also known as gateway access. The gateway allows the two networks to talk to each other, but the users of the gateway internet are limited in their ability to fully access all of the tools available on the internet. With level 1 connectivity, users are limited in what they can access on the internet by what their service provider allows them to access. Good examples of networks with level 1 connectivity are America Online AOL, CompuServe, Prodigy and many of the other commercial online services. AOL is in effect, it has a great number of different programs that its subscribers can use like the chat rooms but all of these programs run only on the AOL network. AOL subscribers and subscribers to most of the other commercial online services are lucky in that they can access some of the tools on the internet through their gateway. Many people with level 1 connectivity only have email access. Level 2 connectivity Now we are going to see about level 2 connectivity in this video. Level 2 connection is also known as dial-up connection. This provides connection to internet through a dial-up terminal connection. The computer which provides internet access is known as host and the computer that receives the access is client or terminal. The client computer uses modem to access a host and acts as if it is a terminal directly connected to that host. 56K modem access is now widely available and supported by most ISPs. It allows user to surf the web at 56 kbps with graphics. So, this type of connection is known as remote modem access connection. And the host to which the client gets connected is actually connected to the internet by a full-time connection. In dial-up connection to internet, host carries all the command that are typed on a client machine and forward them to internet. It also receives the data or information from the internet on behalf of the client and passes it to them. The client computer acts as a dump terminal connected to remote host. This type of connection can further be divided into three categories Shell connection, TCP IP connection, ISDN. Shell connection In this type of internet connection, the user will get only textual matter of a web page. This connection does not support graphics display. Shell accounts were the only type of internet access available for many years before the internet entered into the world of graphics and became more user friendly. TCP IP connection Today's graphical World Wide Web browsers provide easier access with multimedia sound and pictures. The major difference between shell and TCP IP account is that shell account can only display text and does not support graphics display, whereas TCP IP can display both. ISDN ISDN, that is Integrated Services Digital Network, offers internet connectivity at speeds of up to 128 kbps through the use of digital phone lines. ISDN is a dial-up service that has been provided by telephone companies for many years. To access any of these dial-up accounts, you need the followings. Computer Modem Telephone connection Shell or TCP IP or ISDN account from the ISP Internet client software such as Internet Browser Level 3 Connectivity Let us see about the process of Level 3 Connectivity 
least connection is also known as direct internet access or level 3 connection. It is the secure, dedicated and most expensive level of internet connection. With least connection, your computer is delicately and directly connected to the internet using high-speed transmission lines. It is online 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. It provides secure and private dedicated connection. It can be laid for people requiring extra high bandwidth. It is reliable and dependable but it is very expensive to install. It is not suitable for single or home workers. Hardware requirement. Now we are going to see about what is hardware requirement. Computer. The minimum hardware requirements are as follows. Windows XP, Vista or later. 1.0 GHz or faster processor. One or more gigabytes that is GB of RAM. Sound card and speakers. DVD drive. Monitor capable of 24 bit color at 1024 into 768 resolution or better. Internet. DSL or cable connection through an internet service provider ISP. Account plans offering a minimum of 1.5 MB download and 512 MB upload speed is recommended. AOL may require special setup with AOL tech support. Selection of a modem. In this video, we are going to see the selection of a modem. While selecting a modem, do the following. Check the service. Ensure interfaces. Don't overlook leasing a modem. Don't forget about price considerations. Check the service. Depending on whether user has cable or DSL servers, a user needs a different kind of modem. If user is establishing new servers, determine which type of broadband servers they have access to before purchasing a modem. Be sure that user is aware of the different features of the two types of broadband internet before making a decision or signing a broadband contract. Ensure interfaces. It is important that user select a robust broadband modem that is able to connect to the device. Ensure that the prospective broadband modem is capable of connecting to the device through one of its available interfaces such as USB, PC card, serial port or PCI or ISC port. Check which interface is available for connection on the device before user head to the store to make a purchase. Don't overlook leasing a modem. One easy way to make a decision about the broadband modem is to lease one from the internet service provider. By leasing one, user is able to pay a low monthly fee and ensure that it is suitable for the service. The internet service provider is able to assist user in selecting a modem that works well with both the device and the equipment for the best speed and performance. Don't forget about price considerations. If user is set on purchasing their own modem, set a price to pay before heading to the store. An internal modem is priced the lowest, while external and USB modems are more expensive. PC card modems are also an inexpensive choice to gain connectivity. Shop around within the price range to determine which is the best selection for the budget. Broadband modems bring with them lots of options and varieties. Ensure that user is knowledgeable of all the necessary components to make a smart decision when heading out to find a suitable modem to run the home network. Software Requirement In this video, we are going to learn about Software Requirement Operating System Windows XP Pro or Home Edition
that is Vista probably works but has not tested that yet. Mac or Linux may be okay but it cannot provide much support. Security This is a very important concern. There will be those who will try to gain access to the PC perhaps by finding a way to crash the AED software and get to the desktop. Here are six security measures that can be taken. Minimal non-administrator account Antivirus PC lockdown software No links in content that you create and add to your display Hide the keyboard Modem configuration Now we are going to see about what is modem configuration this is the most important part and requires only one-time customization. Connect the modem to the power supply adapter. Next, connect the Ethernet cable from the modem Ethernet port to the Ethernet port on the PC and wait for the PC or USB light to flash constantly. This means that the modem has successfully integrated to the LAN system. Now open up a browser and in the address bar type http colon slash slash 192.168.1.1 slash. This will take to the modem configuration page. Enter username that is admin and password admin when prompted. If it fails to authenticate then check the ISP manual to get the username and password. Once successfully logged in, the modem will display the device info on the screen. Telephone line options. In this video, we are going to see about telephone line options. Dial-up internet access is a type of internet connectivity that operates through a standard telephone line. Dial-up access refers to connecting a device to a network via a modem and a public telephone network. Dial-up access is just like a phone connection. The only difference is that rather than people at the two ends, computer devices are present. Dial-up access uses normal phone lines, thus the quality of the connection is not always good and data rates are limited. Dial-up internet access is offered through a number of internet service provider ISP. Most ISPs lease a set of telephone numbers, sometimes local, sometimes national, that dial into network pipeline that feed into the internet. Open joining a dial-up service, the subscriber chooses a username and password. Once the modem calls the phone number and makes a connection, a handshake takes place in which information is exchanged between the computer modem and the remote server. The username and password is supplied by the modem. This grants the user access through the dial-up gateway to the internet. Dial-up servers is least expensive but also the slowest type of internet access. Connecting to dial-up internet accounts, click on Start and point to Control Panel. Click on Network and Internet Connections. Click on create a new connection. Select connect to the internet and click next. Select set up my connection manually and click next. Select connect using a dial up modem and click next. Type in the username and password and click next. Click finish and the internet setup are complete. Dedicated access. Dedicated Internet Access is a reliable and scalable worldwide Internet Access service. It is specifically designed to maximize today's business critical VPN connectivity needs. The ISPs managed Internet connectivity with a comprehensive suite of services features all at the fair market price required by global businesses. 
The key benefit of dedicated access is that it is cost effective and it provides reliable internet access. ISDN Connection ISDN is the abbreviation of Integrated Services Digital Network. ISDN is an international communication standard for sending voice, video and data over digital telephone lines or normal telephone wires. ISDN supports data transfer rates of 64 kbps that is 64,000 bits per second. It is mostly designed for leased lines. Configuration allows for multiple types of terminations. It uses a terminal adapter that is TA for termination and it is not a modem. There are two types of ISDN. Basic Rate Interface BRI Primary Rate Interface BRI Basic Rate Interface BRI It consists of 64 kbps B channels and 1 D channel for transmitting control information. Primary Rate Interface BRI It consists of 23 B channels and 1 D channel that is US. The original version of ISDN employs baseband transmission. Another version called BISDN uses broadband transmission and is able to support transmission rates of 1.5 Mbps. ISDN requires fiber optic cables and is not widely used. ISDN services ISDN telephony ISDN telecopy ISDN and analog terminals Call forwarding Call waiting CLIP clip that is calling line identification presentation CLIR clear that is calling line identification restriction three party conference advice of change malicious call identification advantages of ISDN digital services with less error direct fast connection with no dialing Higher bandwidth that is takes less time in downloading material. Supports multiple users. Able to use ISDN for more than one task. Disadvantages of ISDN. ISDN is more expensive to install than a standard telephone. Not easy to set up. All exchanges do not provide ISDN service. Protocol options. Now let us see about the protocol options. Secure shell SSH. Secure shell or SSH is a network protocol that allows data to be exchanged using a secure channel between two networked devices. It is used primarily on Linux and Unix based system to access shell accounts. SSH was designed as a replacement for Telnet and other insecure remote shells which send information, notably passwords, in plain text, leaving them open for interception. The encryption used by SSH provides confidentiality and integrity of data over an insecure network such as the Internet. SSH is typically used to log into a remote machine and execute commands. SLIP SLIP The serial line internet protocol that is SLIP is a mostly obsolete encapsulation of the internet protocol designed to work over serial ports and modem connections. SLIP on PCs has been largely replaced by the point-to-point -point protocol that is PPP which is better engineered, has more features and does not require its IP address configuration to be set before it is established. SLIP does not provide error detection, therefore SLIP on its own is not satisfactory over an error-prone dial-up connection. PPP Point-to-point -point protocol or PPP is a data link protocol commonly used to establish a direct connection between two networking nodes. PPP originally emerged as or encapsulation protocol for transporting IP traffic over point-to-point -point links. P 
PPP is a full duplex protocol that can be used on various physical media including twisted pair of fiber optic lines or satellite transmission. PPP is usually preferred over the earlier de facto standard slip because it can handle synchronous as well as asynchronous communication. PPP can share a line with other users and it has error detection that slip lacks. Service options. In this video, we are going to see about the service options. Email. Email, that is electronic mail, is the exchange of computer stored messages by telecommunication. Email is a system of worldwide communication in which a computer user can compose a message at one terminal that can be regenerated at the recipient's terminal when user logs in. Thus, email is a system of sending and receiving messages electronically over a network as between personal computers. www the World Wide Web, commonly abbreviated as WWW, is a system of intellect hypertext documents accessed via the Internet. The World Wide Web enabled the spread of information over the Internet through an easy-to-use and flexible format. It has played an important role in popularizing the use of Internet. Firewall a firewall is a program or device that acts as a barrier to keep destructive elements out of a network or specific computer. Firewalls are configured, that is in hardware, software or both with specific criteria to block or prevent unauthorized access to a network. They work as filters for your network traffic by blocking incoming packets of information that are seen as unsafe. In large corporations, if a firewall is not in place, thousands of computers could be vulnerable to malicious attacks. Firewalls should be placed at every connection to the internet and are also used to control outgoing web traffic as well as in large organizations.